Hi, good afternoon everyone. So the topic I've selected today is the health of your child, the health of children. And <clears throat> it's not like we don't know enough about what we need to feed our children every single day. It's not like we don't have enough of knowledge of what food is good for our children and what food's bad for our children. The problem is with lifestyle. The problem is with the decisions we make <clears throat> when it involves our children. The problem lies in the kind of food that is being served by schools. The problem lies in the kind of ch children's parties that we send our kids for, where they get offered junk all the time. And yet we get questions every single day about what are the kind of foods our children have to eat every single day to maintain good health. Sadly, it's not about just the kind of food that your children have to eat. It's much bigger than that. The problem is much larger. We need to start having a very holistic approach towards the health of our ch children. I spend time in hospitals every day and now it's not just middle-aged people or elderly people who come for treatments. It's children with juvenile diabetes, children with heart problems, children with obesity issues, young girls with PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndromes, children with attention deficit disorders. And yes, I know there are many conditions that children are born with. There are certain cancers that children are born with. There are certain syndromes that children are born with. And yes, Many of them are genetic, but what about the rest of them? What about the innumerable children who are given antibiotics for every little cold or viral fever that they have? Now, I'm clearly not against medicine, but I am against the fact that we're using medicine as a band-aid approach to fix the health of our children. Where, when, and on the other side, we are not looking at the fact that giving the right nutrition to your kids, the right amount of activity in their lives could make all the difference. So I've put forward a couple of points and I know there are people out there who are waiting to talk about fiber and what we should add to their children's diet and common problems like, oh, my children don't eat, they don't eat fruits, they don't like vegetables and all of that stuff. Well, let's face one thing, children grow, go through phases all the time. But what we need to look at right now is a top-down approach. We as parents lead by example. Your children see what you do. So the environment that you create at home is exactly the kind of environment that your children grow up in. So if you eat unhealthy food, your children will eat unhealthy food. If you keep on eating junk and your fridge is full of junk and your kitchen cabinets are full of junk, you send out a message to your children that it is okay to eat these foods. So when a teacher in school or anyone else says that you shouldn't be eating these foods, it doesn't make sense to a child because my parents are eating it. It's in my own kitchen, so it cannot be unhealthy. Now, I get to speak to children all the time, be it at schools, at sessions, or one-on-one -on -one consultations, and I always separate the parent from the child because the child has a lot more freedom to talk about exactly what happens at home. And you will be surprised to hear, you know, I mean, the stories that children talk about, you know, how their parents can drink aerated drinks and eat packets of chips and chocolates, but the children are actually not supposed to do it. Or they say, or children are even told that, oh, it's unhealthy for you. You're a growing child. If you want to grow tall and go, grow strong and have good grades in school, you shouldn't be eating this. Which child will listen to this when they see parents doing the same? Everywhere you go around, you see ads for junk food. You see, you see you know, advertisements for processed foods and this sets in the subconscious of a child and they believe that it's okay to eat and all of a sudden a child decide, you know a parent decides to introduce health into the family and they say stop doing this and stop doing that don't eat this and don't eat that no child's going to listen to you and then it becomes a kind of a rebellious attitude where a child will do exactly the opposite of what you tell them not to do so we have attention deficient disorders in school and those kind of children we see the kind of lifestyles they have at home they drink aerated drinks, which are full of high corn fructose syrup, which makes a child completely hyper all the time. The sugar rush, the high corn fructose syrup, the carbonates, the phosphorus, all of this, MSG in so many of the processed foods and the restaurant foods out there, excites the brain of a child. It excites the brain of an adult. It makes an adult hyper. Caffeine in certain foods, caffeine in chocolates makes an adult have an excited brain. What do you think happens when it reaches the brain of a child? And then we label the child as attention deficient disorder syndrome and all of a sudden the child is labeled to be you know, something that they're not all because we are feeding them the foods or we are putting them in a lifestyle that encourages that behavior. 
And having a child labeled with something like a syndrome or a disease like diabetes is the worst thing for a child's confidence level. The sugar levels go up, oh, pre-diabetic, juvenile diabetes. Yes, maybe it's become a condition because we have caused it. We have allowed it to happen. And then you have parents over here spending loads and loads of money on extracurricular activities and tennis classes and swimming classes and the best schools and IB schools and, and all that bullshit, which doesn't matter if your child doesn't have their health. We need to put the right food in their bodies and just writing it off Google or asking a nutritionist, oh, tell me the right foods for my kid to eat. Oh, my child doesn't eat fruits. My child doesn't eat vegetables. Yes, your child will not like fruits and vegetables if you fed them on sugar, which is made to addict your child to that particular product. Sugar is addictive for every adult as well. Which one of you can overcome sugar cravings? Which one of you can stop at one piece of chocolate or one or two packets of, or pieces of chips from a packet? No, you get addicted to it because processed and junk food is designed to addict you to it. Most of these food companies spend billions and billions of dollars for that perfect recipe to get your brain addicted to it, to generate cravings which you cannot fight, which is why you have one craving after another and the junk food wins over your willpower. So if that's happening to us as adults, what's happening to children who have not yet completely developed all of their motor and sensory skills. They have no control. And then your child throws a tantrum because they want that piece of chocolate or they want that junk food. And you admonish them on their behavior and all of that stuff. They're going through an addiction process that we have created. Do you really, really think that feeding your child sugar and processed food in excess is gonna make them, do you think that's gonna make them love you more? No, your love and the time that you give them is going to make them love you more, is going to create more bonding. All the bribing of food and outside food and chocolates has to stop. Juvenile diabetes, hitting children at the age of 8, 9, 10, young girls with PCOS starting their puberty, their lives of puberty with incorrect period cycles. The cause is us, the choices that we make for our children, period. We are to blame. We are responsible for everything that our children go through. If they have low concentration levels at school, we are responsible because we are not giving them a complete and balanced breakfast. We are not giving them the right amount of rest at night because we are too busy with our social lives to put our children to sleep. Or we have servants, this horrible culture of having servants put your children to bed. Servants feed your children meals. It breaks that bonding. Obviously, a child can bully the servant and not have the correct food that goes in. This has to change. I don't care how much money you have there and how, much, how many servants you have out there. It breaks the actual bonding between the mother and the child and the father and the child or the parents and the children. So the, this is reality. Don't think you can hire expensive nutritionists and doctors to fix your child if you're not willing to notice the gap that you are creating in your child's life and fill that gap. Yes, it requires effort and yes, it requires sacrifice. If you can't do that, you are irresponsible to your child's health and your child's life. Period. Accept that. That's the bitter truth. So yes, number one, rewarding your children with food. Oh, study hard and we'll take you out to Pizza Hut. Study hard, study three hours and I'll order a pizza for you. You never reward your child with food. The purpose of food is energy. The purpose of food is sustaining life. So when you make food a reward, a child sees food as a reward. Reward them with a book. Reward them with a picnic. Reward them with something, some activity that you can do with them. But never with food. All entertainment and all bonding doesn't have to happen over food. It doesn't have to happen over junk food. Your child may be happy temporarily because he's going to get that sugar fix and you're going to get that sugar fix too. But it's not a meaningful experience. I'm not against junk food. I'm against the overconsumption of junk food. So it's rewarding children with food is a bad idea. Second, overfeeding your food. In-laws, mother-in-laws, father-in-laws, everyone, stop overfeeding your children. Okay, We've all, we have to break out of that stupid, senseless culture of overfeeding your children food. If your child is hungry, your child will eat. I don't know a single child who died of not eating unless it was a medically triggered disorder. If your child doesn't want to eat, don't force them to eat. They will build a bad relationship with food. They will become rebellious. If they don't want to eat, don't let them eat. They will be hungry at some point. And when they're hungry, don't feed them until it's time for their next meal. Yes. 
That's how you handle it. And then your child will learn to respect the relationship with food. When's the best time to start with discipline? Right now. Not when they're 14 and 15, not when they're 8 and 9. Right now from the time they can communicate and the time they can, they can understand. Overfeeding your child will not make them bigger, stronger and grow taller. You really, really think there's a nutrition plan to make your child grow taller? The growth of your child is dependent on human growth hormones. Half the lifestyles that children lead today depletes human growth, hormone, human growth hormones and your child cannot grow. And then you look at growth injections and hormonal injections and, oh, I flew my child to New York for this treatment and that treatment. Guess what? It doesn't work. Adding more protein to your child's diet will not work unless your child's diet is already protein deficient. Getting your children to eat balanced meals, spend less time in, in front of their video games and TVs and Xboxes and run around. When you run, when you move, when you exercise, that stimulates human growth hormones and your children will grow. Salt, sugar and processed food. The more sugar you give them, that compromises the growth of human growth hormones. The more sugar you give them, it creates brain fog. They cannot, they cannot concentrate in schools. They have fatigue. They have cravings. They want to eat more. They get addicted to the good taste of food. And then which child will like a fruit and vegetable when they're addicted to something which is designed to make it taste so much better? So in moderation, if you have more sugar and more junk in their food, they are obviously not going to have an affinity towards your vegetables and your dals and your rotis. But you give a child who has never tasted sugar fruit and they will take to it like a fish in water. They will eat fruits. They will love fruits. They will love certain kinds of vegetables at one phase in their life. And all of a sudden, they may not like those vegetables or fruits and they'll go through a phase. Let them go through that phase. They will come back to it. But the more you push them and push them and push them to eat that food, they will start rebelling against you and they will not eat it even if they want to eat it. So sugar, salt, processed foods happen to be the biggest enemy when it comes to your health and the health of your child. So you need to lead by example. You can't tell the child that, sorry, don't eat this. You can't have it in your house. You can't set an example of eating it. It has to be in moderation and if they want to eat something bad, you create, you create a rule that, fine, you can have this slice of pizza but you need to choose something that's healthy with it. So they understand that, okay, if I want to give my, bad, my body bad calories, I should also give it good calories so that there's a balance. There's a trade-off. So your body's not just getting bad nutrition and it's screaming out for more nutrients that it needs to run its normal bodily functions and all the reactions that happen every second of the day. You are also giving it something good that it can work with. So eat your fruit, you can have a little bit of junk. Okay, you do this, you can have a little bit of junk. Exercise a little bit. You can have a little bit of junk. There has to be a trade-off. There has to be a negotiation. And children work well with negotiation. Otherwise, they manipulate you and they can bully you. So smart negotiation. Just because you're in a hurry for a movie with your friends or a cocktail dinner party with your friends or some stupid social event with your friends, don't think that the quickest fix is order pizza. So, oh good, the kids are going to love it, eat it. I don't have to spend time with them. That's a problem. That's a big problem. Correct yourselves first if you want to correct your children. The fourth point, sedentary lifestyles and exercise. Look around at average school children. They're roaming around with pot bellies. That's unexplainable unless they have a medical condition. It speaks volumes about the kind of sedentary lives that you create for them. It is your job and your responsibility to make them move more. It is not the job of your nutritionist or your trainer or your school to do that. If you make that part of their culture, they begin to love movement and they will start to do it automatically. But if you're giving them so much of TV time and video game time and all of a sudden you've woken up to be healthy and you try to make this change and force them to do it, it's going to be difficult. So you start from day one making active lifestyle a part of their development. Look for deficiencies like vitamin D3. Kids have limited exposure to sunlight today. I have mothers bring their daughters saying, oh, I don't want to put them in the sun. They'll become dark. Their skin won't glow. And think of the future. Think of immunity. Think of their life 50, when they're 15, 16, 18 and 21 years old. Are you really so vain to worry about your daughter's beauty and color right now? You're doing it wrong. Your children need exposure, exposure to sunlight in the right quantities at the right time. And look out for vitamin D3 deficiencies because it's extremely, extremely important for you to understand that these deficiencies are completely, completely the root cause of most diseases and most disorders. So please look at deficiencies. 
the fifth point, the sixth point, it is not about the food that you eat. It is clearly about, it is clearly about the way that food is absorbed. So basically, when you're eating the right foods, okay, your child could be eating fruits, you need to look at their gut health. Are they able to even absorb all of the food that they're eating? So for that, you need to look at the amount of probiotics they're having. Do they have the right amount of curd in their diets? Do they have the right amount of probiotics? Every time they take all these antibiotics and heavy medications, are they also getting prescribed, are they also getting prescribed an antibiotic so that it can take care of the side, I mean, a probiotic so it can take care of the side effects of the antibiotics. This is real. Stop relying so much on medication unless your child really needs it. If your child needs to miss a couple of days of school or their tennis classes or their social calendars and birthday parties, let them do it to rest and to heal. I'm sorry if I'm coming across so aggressive with this particular topic, but this is a topic, this is, this is an area of responsibility that parents are shying away from, most of them. Look at the amount of birthday parties. Some children have a more complicated social calendar than adults. If an average class has 20 children in a class, okay, that's possibly 20 birthdays in a year, okay, which means that's an average of almost one to two or even three birthdays in a month. And what's get, what gets served at all these birthday parties? Pizza, pasta, cake, chips, aerated drinks, packaged juices. It's ridiculous. I mean, we have set that culture that a birthday party should have all of this crap. And who can change it? No one, but all the parents collectively. That, yes, we want to send our children for parties which will, where a child can have fun and can also eat healthy foods. There are healthy options. We're not saying serve salads at a party. We're, we're saying serve healthier options. And there are healthier options. There can be healthier cakes. There can be healthier chips. There can be healthier snacks. We only need to make the effort. So many parents spend more money on gifts and return gifts than the food of the party. It doesn't make sense. Each of the parties that you do are great for a child to socialize, a child to bond. But can we add that element of health to it? And that decision is dependent on what you decide as a parent. Because your child is going through all those parties all the time and consuming so much of junk, which is building that addiction and that addiction. And what would your child want for the next party? Nothing but junk. So this is going to require collective action and responsibility from every single parent to support it. When I speak to all the schools, schools want to provide healthy lunches to children. But guess who interferes with that? The parents. At all the PTAs, it's the parents who say, oh, this is such boring food. The, the thing is, parents have fear and insecurities in their own life that they can't deal with. Just because they can't come to an understanding that you can have healthy food, they can't do it themselves. A child is resilient. A child will adapt. But because of the parents' fear and insecurity, we weigh all of this down on children, and that's the problem that we have today. Even schools are controlled by these so-called powerful parents who control half the boards and all that bullshit. And believe me, half of these parents have most of the health problems, and they come to me all the time. I'm going to be open about that shit that happens. Okay? So it's a community problem that we have. It's a problem of society. Society is a virus that is affecting our generation and affecting our children. In a world that's advanced today where we have the best education systems, we have the best food available, we have spending power to improve our child's lives. Our children can go through so much that we didn't get to go through. And yet, we can't provide them a platform of good health. Children suffer every single day with nutritional deficiencies and diseases brought on because of the irresponsibility of parents, the fears and insecurities of parents. So you need to fix yourself before you decide to start fixing your children. So again, when it comes to children not eating fruits and vegetables, the answer is with you. I have no magical nutrition plan, nor does any other nutritionist to get your child to start eating what you want them to eat. Reduce the junk, let the environment of the body get cleaned up so that it starts craving clean, wholesome, natural food. A natural human being will, being will automatically wean and lean towards foods which are wholesome and raw digestive enzymes. So what should your child's diet look like? There should be fruits, there should be vegetables, there should be nuts, there should be seeds, and part of the cooked food, rice, a roti, and lentils. If you choose non-veg, choose non-veg. That is what your child's diet should contain. And that's all they need. 
The only other thing that you need to focus on with your children is building a strong immunity. Immunity is everything when it comes to protecting your child from the onset of diseases, allergies. Children are being born with allergies today. Young children in the age groups of five, six, seven. Allergies. Allergies is a problem with your liver. You clean your liver, you improve your immunity. Your immunity takes care of allergies. And every lifestyle that I just described is what is depleting your children of a strong immunity. So this is a strong message to all the parents. Get your shit together. Okay, start taking personal responsibility for your children. Children are beautiful, they're innocent, they're resilient, they're like sponges. They are willing to open up, they're willing to dry. It is we who come in between and create all of this complication and all of this rubbish. There are only two things that children need. They need your time and they need your love. Everything else is a business. Every other workshop is a business. Give them your time, give them, a love, give them your love, and you will change. You will build that holistic platform of healing and prevention in your child's life. Have a good day, everyone.